everyone, it's Barbara C. Phillips, founder of Nurse Practitioner Business Owner, and I'm back with another business question of the week. And this one has to do with Practice Fusion. They recently were purchased by Allscripts and have announced that there will be a monthly fee. And this has a lot of people talking in all of the social media groups and in emails that I'm getting. And everybody wants to know, well, just what is their alternative? And so let's talk about that today. So Practice Fusion, I actually don't recall how long they've been around, but I've certainly used them for several years and they were free for um, a lot of, for well, for everybody. And the way that they did that free model, from what I understand, is they sold de-identified data and that's how they funded their business. But now they've been purchased by Allscripts and Allscripts has announced that they will be charging $99 a month per provider. And I believe that begins in May. And so with it no longer free, a lot of NPs are asking, well, what else can I use in place of that? And what do I do now? And so I want to talk about some of that. But before we get into should you be switching, you need to think about if that is the direction you want to go, just what are you going to do with the EMR? One of the things is we know that EMRs just add hours onto many of our days. They're they're not easy to navigate. There's nothing, I don't often see things that are positive that people talk about how they use EMRs. It's really impacted their practices. And certainly patients don't like them either because as providers, our nose are always in the computers trying to get all this stuff done. So one of the things that you want to make sure that you are thinking about is ease of use. How easy is it for you to use an EMR? To me, that should be one of the first considerations. You also want to look at the port, the features that are out there, such as a portal, such as is it right now, which is really important, is it MACRA certified? Are you going to be able to do your reporting for MACRA? through that particular system. Can you do your prescribing? Can you create templates? Can you make it in a way that it is easy for you to access data and to retrieve data? Cost to me needs to be considered obviously because there are EMRs that charge um, less than $50 a month to charging several hundred dollars a month per provider. And so you're going to really need to look at your budget. But when you start looking at pricing, you also want to look at what are the hidden costs of this? Are they going to charge you for a startup? Are they going to charge you for upgrades? Are they going to charge you for training your staff? Are they going to charge you for your ancillary staff in addition to your providers? What about when you have to upload documents into the system? How is that going to be? Are you limited to so many documents? Are you limited to so many charts? And does it interact with some kind of a billing platform if you were billing insurance? And is there an additional charge for that? And what is it? So you want to think about all of those things before well, for any time that you're looking for an EMR, but let's get back to Practice Fusion now if you're going to want to switch. So here's what I have to say about that. There's very few EMRs that are charging less than the $99 a month. It's actually not a bad cost when you start looking at the entire landscape of EMRs. But regardless, that may not be in your budget. So you do need to take into consideration what you're going to use. And I'm going to talk about some potential examples here in a moment. But I want you to take this into mind. I'm someone who has switched EMRs a couple of times. It is a pain. It is a pain in the gluteus maximus. It is a pain. You have to download all of your charts, then you have to upload your charts into another system. And when you upload those charts, you're not actually able to upload the charts so that you can access data like you have. You're going to just be uploading a PDF like another document. And so however you're going to access those kinds of documents on your new system, that's how that's going to be. It's not the easiest to, is in terms of being able to find and pull out some data. 
you need to think about how much time it's going to cost you to do that. And you need to think about how many records do you have? Do you have just 10, 15, 20 records, maybe 100 records? Or do you have 3,000 patients currently in your database? And what is the time and effort it's going to cost you in order to move that data? Don't forget, you're going to have to learn a new system. That also takes a lot of time. That's going to slow you up. It's going to impact your productivity and probably your level of frustration. Can your biller, whoever that may be, somebody in-house or somebody you outsource to, can they utilize the new system? Do they have access to it? Does it fit in with whatever billing platform that you're currently using? So you want to look at that as well. And then, of course, when you look at the cost, I've already mentioned in the big scheme of things, it's probably not the most expensive thing out there. Well, it certainly is not the most expensive thing out there. It's also not the least inexpensive, but it's currently among the lower end. And so that's something that you want to think as well. So take a look at your practice model and start asking yourself these questions. You know, when we look at costs, one of the things that we don't often think about is opportunity costs. And this is one of those things that is an opportunity cost. It may be that you have so many patients and that everybody in your office is already well-versed in this system. You've been using it for years. Therefore, you may want to consider staying with it. But if not, here are some things that we can talk about. Now, I'm not recommending one of these EMRs over another. These are just some of the alternatives that I've seen a lot of NPs mention in some of the groups. Now, Office Ally is probably one of the least expensive ones out there. Office Ally is, I believe, $30 a month. And it is in the cloud. It does have an attached billing system that you can utilize along with it. Doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it certainly is very functional. In fact, when I first started my very first practice and had to figure out how to do the billing myself, I used Office Allies Practice Mate, which is their free billing platform. And it certainly worked for me for a number of years. Athena is a very popular one, not the least expensive, but a very popular one nonetheless. Advance MD is also another popular one, has a billing platform um, with it along with Athena. I see Charm EHR and Cure MD mentioned a lot. I don't really know anything about them. Now, Amazing Charts, I will tell you that was the very first EMR that I used, and at the time it was server based. And when I made the decision to move to cloud-based, they weren't quite there yet. I understand now that you can have it both ways. You can either use it server-based or cloud-based. And it was a great EMR. It was relatively easy. For me, it was very cost-effective when I used it. I don't know the current pricing, but that is something you can look at. MediTouch, Cario, a lot of people like that. Cario at one time was free. It is no longer and then simple practice. And the reason I threw simple practice in here is if you have a practice where you are not prescribing medications, simple practice is about $30 a month or $40 a month. I can't remember which. It's mostly set up for uh, therapists, counselors. But again, if you're not prescribing, it may be a platform that is easy for you. Um, it is what I'm currently using in my practice right now because I'm not prescribing meds here in Missouri, but it is um, it works great. It has a portal. I can do all of my stuff online. And so that may or may not work for you because again, there's no prescribing component. So that's really all I have to say about um, the EHR situation right now, I know it's causing a lot of people a lot of distress at the time that I'm recording this. And so hopefully take a step back and just take a look at really what might work for your individual practice. And if you have any further questions for any of us here where we can ask these or answer the questions in a future upcoming video, you can leave it for me over at bit.ly forward slash npquest or send me an email at mpbohelp at gmail.com. Please subscribe to our videos. Thank you for liking them and sharing them. And I look forward to talking with you in another video question of the week. Bye-bye now.